Hi guys, welcome back to another quick Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and in today's post I'm going to show you guys a quick technique or a few techniques how I add a little bit of texture to my background. As you guys can see over here I don't have any texture yet and I want to take another image, move it into here and just put it onto my background. So how are we going to do that? Okay, first of all I'm on my original layer again and as you guys can see I've just got this normal guy standing here and I don't have any background at the, at the moment. I just have a brown background but I want to add a texture. So first of all I'm going to go to my bridge and I went outside and just shot some random textures that I found say some little bit of the street, a little bit of a fence and so on a little bit more. In today's tutorial I want to take this um, background so what I'm going to do is just open it with CS5 and Photoshop and now it's directly taking me through to Camera Raw. In Camera Raw I tweaked it a little bit. Um, basically this was my preview shot or my first shot so I just tuned my blacks a little bit, turned those up a little bit and I gave it a little bit of sharpness. So I turned up the amount a little bit and the radius down a little bit just to sharpen the edges a little bit. Then also my blacks up a little bit and that's all I did in Camera Raw. Once I'm done I'm going to say Open Object and that takes us right through to Photoshop. So in Photoshop, while this is being prepared, next step that we're going to do is basically rotate this. As you guys can see it's still as a smart object so first of all I'm going to press right click and just say rasterize that so we have it as a normal layer. Okay, next step I'm going to go to Image, Image Rotation over here and we're just going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Because I'm happy with that and don't worry too much about the color and everything, we're going to fix that in our other image. Okay, I'm going to press F quickly to get out of the full screen mode, just moving my frame over here. So now you can see this is our image that we're going to work on and this is our texture. So first step that I'm going to do is again select my window here with the texture, going to select my layer over here on the right hand side, hold it and also hold shift and move it over here to this side. So now I'm just going to drop it and directly via holding shift it clips to the edges and it's nicely centered as well like the rest. Okay I'm just going to minimize this and also going to press F again so we have our new image here nice and big. Okay, so as you guys can see here, we've got our texture. I'm just going to rename that quickly to texture. And there we have our original shot. So as you guys know me, I'm most probably just going to duplicate this. And that I'm doing now, duplicate that, press right click, rasterize that layer. And we're going to write the person. Okay, because this is going to be our person and that our texture. So I'm going to move this onto the top here. And now what we're going to do is basically just create a little selection and we're just going to select the person, cut it out, create a mask and then we'll have the texture underneath. So that's why I also moved the layers to the top. Okay, select your person layer over here. We're going to go over here to the left hand side and select the quick selection tool. I'm just going to work, make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm working with a Vacuum Continuous 4 board again so via my wheel I'm able to make my brush a little bit smaller. So basically what I'm doing now is just selecting the person and just creating a rough selection around the guy and a little bit more around his hair and also his ear and everything is in. Okay, a little bit more over here on the side. Photoshop is still rendering that. A little bit here more. Okay, now we swapped or actually now we got too much, but don't worry, we can fix that pretty easily. I can just press Command Z and go a step back. Okay, make my brush a little bit smaller again and I'm just going to select a little bit more and I'm happy with that. Now what we're going to do is basically just create a mask onto this. So I'm just going to hold Alt. No, I'm not going to hold Alt. I'm just going to select the new layer mask icon down here and we will directly have a new mask. Okay, as soon as I switch my texture layer on again, you'll directly see that now the texture is behind the person. But our cutout isn't that nice at all. So next step that I'm going to do is basically select my mask over here, press right click and go all the way to refine mask. Okay, go over there, just move my window a little bit to the side and first step that I'm going to do in this new window here under refine mask I'm going to say overlay or sometimes I work on layer directly for this moment I'm going to work on layer directly okay then also if you want to you can play a little bit with the smart radius over here just to get a little bit more pixels and work finer for me at the moment I'm just going to work with the settings with zero 
overall. Okay, I'm going to go over here to my image and just really quickly going to paint over the side and over the hair of the person and also a little bit more a little bit more. So basically this tool helps me now just to refine this edge and also to blend all of those things a little bit better especially at the top here with the hair. Okay, a little bit more over here and that looks alright to me. Okay, I'm just going to say OK and now that refine mask is rendering that for us. Okay, so as you guys can see now that it has been rendered and now we still have the option actually to just go into here a little bit and tweak and fine tune our mask. So I don't want to show you guys too much about how to refine or how to tune your mask over here. That's very easy. Basically you just have to go over and select your black and white foreground colors over here and then you can just paint with your brush. You can paint in a little bit more of the texture again or if you switch with X and white foreground color you can just paint your person in back again a little bit. So I would sit here and just paint in a little bit of the person's edge a little bit again and just fix everything that the refine tool didn't fix for me that properly which also doesn't take me too long. It's most probably just a small little step that we have to do along the lines here. Okay, and a little bit more on the hair, and I'm just going to fix that a bit more. Over here. I think I showed this technique in a few tutorials before, so if you haven't seen that, please fall back in the tutorials and just have a look. Okay, a little bit more over here. Okay, so next step again, zoom out. And now we have our person in front of the texture. But for me that texture doesn't really look that real and I th think I still need to work on this. So the next step I want to do to this texture layer is adding a little bit of a fill layer. So first of all I'm going to go to layer, I'm going to go to new fill layer, solid color. In here I'm going to say yes, use as a previous clipping mask because I want to clip that layer to the texture layer. So activate this box here and say OK. So first of all, we're just going to get a rough color over here. I'm just going to sample a rough color over here, say OK. And now we just have the color. Hmm, that's weird. But I wanted to just have the color, not the full layer under a normal mode. So yes, I need to change my blending options in here. So from normal, I'm going to change it all the way to color. So in here, we just have color now. And now what I'm going to do is actually blend this layer off and double click and also blend my texture layer off double click onto here on my solid color picker and I'm going to pick this brown color from my actual background over here. Say OK that and I'm going to turn on the texture and I'm going to turn on my new color fill layer. And as you guys can see already that brown texture from the background already applied as a new color onto our texture. So now I don't want to overtake that to 100 opacity. I'm going to change that later again a little bit. Next step that I'm going to do to this is most probably add a little bit of levels to it. Also go back to adjustments here, we're going to select levels. And now we actually forgot a little step. So what we have to do is also clip this again. So I'm holding Alt, going between my two layers over here. Hold Alt and just clip that to those layers. Okay, now I'm able to go back to my levels on the top here and just tweak my levels a little bit and just make this a bit brighter or a bit darker the way I actually want it. I want to darken this a little bit more and also brighten the center a little bit more. Okay. Next step that I'm basically going to do is go again back to adjustments here and we're going to just desaturate that a little bit. So hold Alt this time so we're clipping it to the, the rest of our layers and just hold that and select over here say yes use as previous clipping mask. Okay. And now I'm just going to take the saturation out a little bit. Not too much. Okay, and that is our final step that we actually did for just clipping that a little bit. Okay, go out here again. Next step that we're going to do is just select all of these layers that we just had now with holding shift, selecting all of that texture as well. Press command G and put it together in a new group and call that texture. Okay, save it on that. And now we're going to do our final step where we're just going to take our opacity down a little bit so that our foreground pops a little bit more again and that our texture layer just fades in a little bit into the background. Okay, so as you guys can see that is our person here at the top. If you want to you can also create a group for that and just write that person. Okay, make that a little bit smaller again so we have everything nice and sorted. Person, texture and our original shot. So here is it again, our texture and person on top of that. 
So my next step would most probably be then just to creating a little bit of a light and a vignette around this image and just suiting the light a little bit so that the background also fits a little bit better with your foreground. Alright, so I hope you guys learned something from this quick tutorial. My name is Manny. If you still have any questions, please email me to team at mannyphotography.co.za. Thank you guys for watching and see you all next week in another tutorial. Bye-bye.